Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at this webinar utilizing U.S. federal student loans at UCD. My name is Bridie Troy, and I work in the North America Global Center in Admissions and Financial Aid. Now, funding is an incredibly important aspect of enrolling at UCD or any university. And as the decision deadline is coming up soon, I'm sure it is a large factor in your decision to go abroad. We have students from all over the U.S. joining us today, and I'll be talking about using U.S. federal student loans for both undergraduate and graduate students. Okay, so today we are going to talk about the process of applying for and receiving your U.S. federal student loan money while in Dublin. First, we'll discuss the various types of federal loans that are available to undergraduate and graduate students. The types of loan and eligibility amounts will vary based on a student's dependency status. I'm sure many of you are aware that there have been some complications with the rollout of the new FAFSA from the U.S. Department of Education. This is affecting every university that certifies federal loans, so we will touch on how this will impact your financial aid application and when to expect your cost of attendance letters, which outline how much you can borrow and your expected expenses. We will touch upon how the loan disbursements work, when you will be getting your funds. And finally, the question that I'm sure is on many of your minds, how to apply for U.S. financial aid at UCD. So if we have any Canadian students in the audience today, um, please note that UCD does accept Canadian provincial loans. It is best to reach out to your specific province's student aid department to learn more about these loans and how to apply. They may require you to submit additional documentation to confirm your status as a UCD student, and any of these documents can be sent to federalaid at ucd.ie. So to start, we are talking about federal student aid, U.S. financial aid, student loans. These are kind of umbrella terms, so I'd like to outline exactly what aid you can use at UCD. So at UCD, and really any university outside the U.S. that accepts federal loans, Students generally use the following types of U.S. financial aid. There are subsidized loans. Uh, these are only available for undergraduate students. Unsubsidized loans, which can be borrowed by any level student. And parent plus or graduate plus loans, depending on your level, undergrad or graduate. Subsidized loans are available for undergraduate students with financial need. With a subsidized loan, the U.S. Department of Education pays the interest on the loan while the student is in school and for the first six months after graduating. Unsubsidized loans are available for undergraduate or graduate students, regardless of financial need. The student is responsible for paying the interest on this type of loan right away. If you choose not to pay the interest while you are in school, your interest will accrue or accumulate and be capitalized. That is, your interest will be added to the principal amount of your loan for you to pay back upon graduation. Direct PLUS loans are for eligible parents or graduate students and are generally borrowed after the student has maximized the amount of subsidized and unsubsidized loans that they can borrow. These are also federal loans, so like the aforementioned loan types, the U.S. Department of Education is your lender. For undergraduate students, their parent would be the borrower of a PLUS loan and the loan is in the parent's name. For graduate students, the student is the borrower and the loan is in their own name. The maximum plus loan amount that a student can receive is the cost of attendance, which we will go over in a little bit. Minus any other financial aid received, for example, scholarships or alternate loans. Also, the parent or graduate student should not have an adverse credit history. A credit check will be conducted when you apply for this loan. If you have an adverse credit history, you might still be eligible for a plus loan, but there will be additional requirements and I recommend that you reach out to the federal aid office to, for more information if this applies to you. Now, everybody should be aware that international schools cannot participate in the U.S. Department of Education's grant programs, so you will not be able to obtain a federal Pell Grant to get your degree at an international school. This is not a UCD policy, but rather a Department of Education one. These are the annual loan limits for each of the direct federal loans. As you can see, the subsidized loan limits increase each year for those that are eligible. We recommend that a student maximizes their requests in subsidized and unsubsidized loans before borrowing PLUS loans, as subsidized and unsubsidized loans do have a lower interest rate than PLUS loans. As you can see here, there are different limits for, de for dependent or independent students. You can see your dependency status on your student aid report once you complete the FAFSA. 
most undergraduate students are dependent students, except in cases of mature age, family estrangement, homelessness, or other unique cases. UCD can make a one-time change of a dependent student to an independent student, but we cannot reverse this change. If you think that your dependency status should be different than what is listed on your student aid report upon submitting the FAFSA, please reach out to the federal aid office to discuss your options. All graduate students are considered independent students and you can see your loan limits in this bottom row. If you are a graduate student, your unsubsidized loan limits will be $20,500 for each year of your degree. If you are a graduate student who has previously taken out loans, you may wanna check your lifetime loan limits to make sure that you are not reaching your maximum loan allowance. So the US Department of Education launched a new application for student aid this year. This application had a soft launch in January and the FAFSA website is still working through some bugs. As a result of these bugs, all universities in the United States and abroad that, are be, that accept federal loans are being forced to delay issuing their financial aid packages or cost of attendance letters. If you have already submitted the FAFSA, you will likely receive your cost of attendance letter in April or May if you have submitted the FAFSA using UCD school code G10188, or you will receive this letter later if you have not yet submitted the FAFSA. So you've heard me discuss the cost of attendance a few times tonight. Now the cost of attendance or the COA letter is an important document that outlines how much a student can reasonably expect to need to borrow while completing a year of their studies. This includes tuition, room and board, travel, personal expenses, healthcare, et cetera. A student can borrow their federal loans up to the total cost of attendance. UCD provides an exaggerated cost of attendance, meaning that the total number on your COA is not a recommended maximum budget for living in Dublin. As students are allowed to borrow up to the total COA, we like to provide a greater than average estimate for living in case a student needs to increase their loans. For example, this was helpful post COVID as people around the world felt the effects of inflation and students were able to increase their loan requests for the second semester. I would like to note that in 2023, Ireland actually had one of the lowest inflation rates in Europe, so that is promising. If you have already submitted your FAFSA, you should receive your COA sometime beginning next month or in May. If you have not yet submitted the FAFSA, I recommend completing that at studentaid.gov as soon as possible, making sure that you include UCD's school code written here on the web uh, on our page, but also again, that is G10188, so that you can be added to the queue to receive a Q&A, or COA. The Federal Aid Office will begin emailing COA letters next month in the order in which the FAFSA was submitted. As mentioned, this COA is an exaggerated cost of living in Dublin, but we highly recommend that you discuss with your families a realistic budget for a year at UCD. A great site that I would recommend is Numbio. This site allows you to uh, this site allows you to see real prices for everyday things such as rent, groceries, transportation, and to compare them with your current city. I know when I was budgeting to live in Dublin, it was really helpful to see how much I would be spending on things compared to my then Chicago-based budget. The COA will include an estimate of weekly and monthly costs, but also one-off expenses such as flights, immigration fees, and health insurance. The COA will be higher for those on three trimester programs as they will have to budget to live in Dublin for an entire year instead of nine months like two semester students. We calculate the COA by taking your tuition and program fees as listed in your offer letter adding in the estimated living expenses and essential costs as shown in the last slide, and then subtracting any scholarships or outside financial aid. If you are receiving a scholarship from UCD that is listed on your offer letter, then we will include this in your COA. If you are receiving a scholarship from another organization, you must let us know so that we can include it in your COA. Failure to report a scholarship can be seen as fraudulent by the US Department of Education. One very important aspect to note is that your COA will be listed in total euros, while the actual money you borrow and will be paying back is in dollars. Also, the COA includes this origination fee, which is attached to every loan, and UCD does not see any portion of this amount. As I mentioned, the COA does use a hypothetical exchange rate as a worst case scenario. 
We want students to be protected and to have the opportunity to increase or decrease their loans as exchange rates may fluctuate. Right now, we set the hypothetical exchange rate at one euro for a dollar thirty, when in reality, the current exchange rate is one euro to a dollar nine. This is done so that the amount eligible to borrow on your COA is higher than you'll likely need. Then, if exchange rates deepen or you need more money than originally anticipated, you have room in your maximum COA number to request an increase. We use the exchange rate from the day that the disbursement is brought down, which is usually a week before the first day of term for that semester. Um, this is the exchange rate that we use every time, and we cannot choose a different exchange rate. Sorry. The total amount that you request will be listed in dollars with 50% of the dollar amount distributed in September and 50% distributed in January. If you're a graduate student on a three trimester program, this will be one third in September, one third in January, and one third in May. We cannot disperse the loan money any earlier than the first day of term uh, or orientation. So if you have expenses such as rent that will be due before September, I recommend budgeting and preparing to pay out of pocket until the first disbursement. You may notice that these disbursement schedule notes the, uh, the net loan that will be dispersed. This is the amount of money that you are receiving after the origination fee has been taken. So it will be lower than your total gross loan amount, which is the amount that you will have to pay back upon graduation. This is a sample disbursement summary. If you look at the disbursement amount for September and January, you can see that the same amount in dollars was dispersed each semester at 50% of the total requested. However, because of the difference in exchange rates in September and January, the student received a slightly different amount in their account each semester. The US Department of Education will send us 50% of your total loan amount for the first semester, or 33% if you're on a three trimester course. Legally, we must distribute these loans in the following order. We will pay 50% of tuition, then if there are any funds remaining, like if you borrowed more than the total cost of tuition, we will pay your accommodation fees for that semester if you're living on campus. Then if there are any funds remaining after that, we will refund any remaining money that you borrowed to the student's Irish bank account. Students can open an Irish bank account in person on campus in September. They will then upload their bank details to SysWeb to ensure that they receive their refund in a timely manner. A step-by-step -step guide to this is in the Federal Aid Handbook on pages 17 to 19 that you can access via the QR code here and at the end of the presentation. The U.S. Department of Education loans this money to students for living expenses and tuition in Dublin, which is why we recommend receiving it in your Dublin-based bank account. You can use an American bank account to receive your loan refund, but we really do not recommend it. The Department of Education sends us your loan amount in dollars, which we then convert to euros before refunding it to you. If you are having your money sent to an American bank account, then the bank will convert these euros back to dollars. You are then dealing with an exchange rate twice, as well as any international fees. Um, as mentioned, the timeline is a little bit shifted from last year, so if um, I have any continuing students on the calls or any graduate students that have previously applied for loans, this might look a little bit later than what you're used to, but that's okay. There's still plenty of time to complete everything. The U.S. financial aid application will open on SysWeb in late April. If you haven't already done so, please submit your FAFSA on studentaid.gov. Once you submit your FAFSA using UCD school code, we will receive your student aid report. Using this report, student aid report, the federal aid team will send you a personalized COA letter. With this letter, you can complete the US financial aid application on SysWeb. This will include signing master promissory notes, an entrance counseling form, and an annual student loan acknowledgement form. All of these documents can be found at studentaid.gov, and you can learn more information about this in the federal aid brochure. The deadline to submit the U.S. financial aid application on SysWeb is July 31st, 2024. In August, our team will review all loan applications and reach out to students with corrections. We will then send award letters to the students confirming their loan amounts and disbursement dates. The first loan disbursement will be exactly one week before the first day of term. 
Now, these are two examples of a student's fee account after receiving their first loan disbursement in September. The first image is a breakdown of an undergraduate student or a graduate student on a two semester program, their account after their September loan has been applied. As you can see, the entirety of your tuition is charged in September, but you do not owe all this at once. Instead, we pay 50% of your tuition, 50% of your accommodation, and the rest will be refunded to you after that first disbursement. Alternatively, this will be 33% tuition, 33% accommodation, and the rest refund, depending on your semester schedule. After your first semester's tuition has been paid, you will still see a balance on your fee account. This is expected. It does not mean that you owe that remaining money right now. This just shows how much you owe over the course of the year, not how much you owe for that semester. One final thing to note is that if you are in receipt of a UCD scholarship, for instance, the International Student Scholarship or the Global Excellence Scholarship, the entirety of your scholarship will be applied in that first semester. So you can expect a much larger refund to your bank account in September than in January. Scholarships are usually applied to the student's account in October, and if you still do not see your scholarship amount applied to your student fee account by the end of October, please reach out to federal aid at ucd.ie. U.S. financial aid is not the only source of funding outside of self-funding for U.S. students. UC also accepts the GI Bill and veterans benefits for most programs. If you are interested in using military benefits at UCD, please reach out to the Federal Aid Office to discuss your options. UCD does accept 529 savings plans. It is up to the student, however, to contact their 529 plan provider to make sure that these funds can be used internationally. Students can also use private loans at UCD. UCD does not recommend a specific provider, but we have had students use providers such as Sally May and Ernest Naviant in the past. I would recommend maximizing your federal loans before requesting private loans, if possible, as federal loans tend to have lower interest rates than private loans. So we are just about to begin our Q&A section, but I'd like to start with addressing some of the most common questions that we receive. One of the main questions that we hear is this, I'm a parent, can UCD contact me instead of my student about their loans? Unfortunately, EU data privacy regulations prevent us from disclosing any personal information about a student's account with anybody other than the student. We always recommend that the student email us directly with any questions or concerns about their account. They are free to CC you in these communications, at which point we would legally reply all and you would be included in the conversation. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but it is a very important date. The U.S. financial aid application will open on SysWeb in late April. I know some students have already tried to start an application, but you have not yet been able. Uh, you may apply from April once we start sending out those cost of attendance letters. The deadline to apply for U.S. financial aid on SysWeb in time for the first disbursement is July 31st, 2024. Now, it is possible to apply for loans after this date, but your disbursement might be delayed. Finally, you are able to adjust your loan request throughout the year. If you reach the end of your first semester and realize that you overestimated how much you would spend, you can email us to request a smaller loan in January. Likewise, if you have not already requested the maximum loan amount and you find that you need more funds, you can email us to increase your request up to the total cost of attendance. With that, I will say thank you so much for tuning in today. Please reach out to us with any further questions. On the right, you will see some great resources for learning more about federal aid. You can scan the QR code for the Federal Aid Handbook, which is a great uh, resource and can answer most of your questions about applying for U.S. financial aid at UCD.